Oh yeah, I was a degenerate gambler, and in this video, I'm gonna share with you what I learned. Now, really quickly, if you want overall context, what was going on, the purpose of all this, then be sure to check out this video, which I'll link down below, which offers a whole lot more context and will make everything moving forward make that much more sense. And at this point, I now have five days under my belt with the challenge, and I'm gonna keep it going, I think, in maybe a little bit more of a broader sense. I'll get more of that later on in the end of the video here. But for now, I just wanna walk you through the results of the challenge and what ultimately played out. And there are some very, very important statistics that I'm quite happy about and really goes to show that I will consider this a challenge success. Now my ego is a little hurt and I'll explain by that. In fact, if you watch day number five of the trading, you know exactly what I mean by my ego kind of getting in the way. And it is still right now. Yes, I confess my ego is a little damaged and I wish I could be saying something a little differently, uh, but it is what it is. But from what actually matters and as far as what the challenge was, it is a success and I'm gonna show you some statistics that help back that up. Now before I get into it, because I know people will ask, what are you using for this? This is called Trader View, and if you like what you see here, I would highly recommend you try them out. I'll put a link down below. In fact, if you use my special link, you'll save uh, 25%, so just keep that in mind. But yes, very, very powerful tool that helped you know reveal some very, very key statistics. So up here at the top, you can see the past five days of the challenge, and overall, it did turn out to be an overall loss, you can see right here. Ended up losing $145, but as I've said time and time again, and this is my ego speaking right now, yeah, I lost money, but that was not the purpose. The purpose was never to try to make money, it was just to follow the rules, and there are some very, very, like I said, interesting data here. And I should note, and this is what makes this nice, is you know, everything is, you know, you can go back and double check me. So I mean, you can't accuse any, you can't accuse me, oh, you're just saying that, Claire, okay, is that actually true? Yeah, all you gotta do is go back and watch day number two of the video, which would have been right here, and that was just, there was a trade in there that was actually a loss, and that should have been a day, quite frankly, over $500. But you'll just have to go back and see the mistake that I did that ultimately, again, my ego speaking here, cost me from making money within the entire challenge, but that's all irrelevant. So let's come over here and let's look at a couple key things here. There we go, reports. And detailed here. And the first statistic that I love to see is, oh, and let me actually go back and offer up a disclaimer here too. I meant to do this earlier, but I'll just do it now. You saw those five days, and even if those were all green and I made a bunch of money, let's be very clear, let me be very clear. Five days, not, not enough. Not enough to, to prove anything. So even if I had made money, I could not sit here and say, oh, I, I discovered a great strategy. Five days of data, not gonna be enough. Now, does it give you the ability to start to gain some insights, to gain some angles and perspectives? Absolutely, but five days of data from day trading is not telling you whether a strategy is fantastic or terrible. So just keep that in mind, you know, this is only five days, but like I said, enough to get some good data. So the first statistic I absolutely love is right here. My average winning trade, was $153. My average losing trade was, well, only $135. So good to see that the strategy and the rules that were followed did produce a situation where my winning trades were more than my losing trades. And then what's really crazy here is again, the number to keep in mind is yes, my total loss was $146, even though that should have been a green, but it's okay, ego, it's okay. But in all seriousness, total, of the five days minus, let's call it 146. But check this out. My number of winning trades, only 44%. I was losing 56.2% of the time. Yet, with losing more than I was winning, I still only lost $146. And I do bring this up though because there's a little bit of misleading here because again, this should actually be eight. And then this should be eight also, which means basically I was 50-50 on the challenge. Uh, and I bring that up again, all kidding aside. So in all actuality, this should have been a green number, which because remember that one trade, again, go back, watch it, number two, uh, was a losing trade when it should have been a good solid winning trade, which would have brought me to green here overall. But my point here is that even with that fat finger trade, even with that mistake on my part, 
You know, that caused me to only be right 44% of the time, but still only down $146. Whereas if you then kind of play the what if game, what if I had not screwed up that trade by clicking buttons that I shouldn't have? Well, then I would have been at eight winning trades, eight losing trades. So basically a coin toss, 50-50. But with a coin toss, I would have been in the green. And I would have been that much more in the green if I was using a broker that did not charge commissions and fees, as you can see down there. Uh, but like I said, that's, that's worth it for me because of the speed it allows me to operate. But my favorite, my favorite statistic that, you know, what I've learned, and not necessarily learned, but what I hope you can learn is that sometimes you just gotta be patient. So look at this, my average hold time for a winning trade was five minutes. My average hold time for a losing trade was two minutes. Now I may do an entirely separate video on this one statistic because it's very, very revealing and important, but think about it. What happens, what do you think most people's statistics are gonna show? They're gonna show winning trades very, very small amount of time, right? Think about it, have you ever been there? You get win, you start to get, okay, well you can't go broke taking a profit, green is green, boom. You take yourself out of the, the trade. Oftentimes, way too soon, and then you sit there and play that, wow, had I held, I would have made so much more, right? And then what happens? Well, it starts to go against you. It starts to go against you, and you hold and hope. You hold and hope. You hold and hope before finally taking a loss. So what that statistic would normally show, I think, in a lot of, not think, but it would show in many situations, is a winning you know, time, very, very small, a losing time, when you're in a losing trade, of way bigger than those winning trades. So very, very happy, and it goes to show that I did indeed follow the rules in terms of, hey, you know what, I, I gotta let the trade work for me. I gotta let it play out. I have to let it win for me. So if I start to get a winning trade, let it win. And that's what I did. And very you know, conveniently, I would say, is at least with my losing trades, I knew pretty quickly, compared to my winning trades, if it was gonna be a loss or not because I only had to hold about two minutes to you know, have to take the stop loss, but when it started to win and I let it win, those statistics sh bared out as I should uh, because my, you know, my hold time there was a whole lot longer. And then the other statistic that I like to see, which was uh, you know, a, a key one that I would encourage you to focus on is right there, my largest gain was $301, largest loss was $264. Now that one doesn't necessarily have to be like that, but just good to show that from an overall risk management standpoint and following the rules, those rules did indeed allow me to have average winning trades bigger than average losing trades, and then my biggest gain was bigger than uh, my biggest loss. Now I do realize that maybe this seems kind of sparse and seems kind of broad, but I am operating under the assumption that you watched that explanation video, you've watched the challenge videos, and this is just me bookending it and putting things in you know its final context. But yeah, what I learned, not necessarily what I learned, but what I hope you learn and what you saw is that when you form the right relationship with your money on the line, you can follow rules. And even though these rules were, as I've admitted time and time again, very basic, very black and white, uh, so that people could hold me accountable into whether or not I was following the rules, even just some basic guardrails like this, you can see reveal into the workings of a strategy that could be built upon. And that's where I'm kind of going back and forth and I seek your uh, feedback, because th this was pretty fun. And as a former engineer, I like the stats, I like the data, it's fun to see this sort of stuff. So I, I, I don't know if I should continue this, if I should try to morph it a little bit, if I should try to tweak it and see what happens, if I just go back to you know how it used to be. So let me know in the comment section below. Um, and the other thing I learned is, this was not quite as popular as I, th I thought it would be, so I got that wrong. I thought there'd maybe, maybe be a little bit more enthusiasm for it, um, and there, there, I, there just wasn't. Um, so again, if I'm misreading that, because I've asked time and time again, hit the like button, leave a comment below. And it's not like that hasn't happened, but I, I honestly thought it would happen more. So if you're somebody that's like, okay, well, other people hit the like button, other people leave a comment. Well, well, right now, maybe I'm being misled. So if you did enjoy it and you have not hit the like button, you have not let a comment, then please leave it on this video here so I can gauge, should I you know, continue going forward? Should I manipulate it? Should I kind of rework it a little bit? Because uh, like I said, I, I, you know, this is a fun. I have many other streams of income, so it's not like I gotta go back to my other thing because I, I got, no, I have some wiggle room here. Um, and I mean, just to be bluntly honest, sure, there, there's some ad revenue coming in from these videos anyhow. So my point here is I have flexibility. It's not like, oh great, I, I gotta go back and do something. I, I don't have to do anything. So I'm seeking your feedback in that regard. So like I said, if you have suggestions or if you have you know anything at all, please leave those in the comment section below and I will definitely read them and I will certainly consider them. So that you know wraps up as far as I'm concerned, the official challenge here. Five days, I did indeed follow the rules. Love seeing these statistics. 
Other than <laughs> I lost money, but uh, that's my ego talking for the final time. But I hope you enjoyed. Like I said, if you want to see more, if you want suggestions, or, or if you have some suggestions, let me know down in the comment section and hit that like button. But yeah, thank you for coming on me or coming with me on this journey. First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick, before you go, I wanna invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, whatever you wanna call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. I'm going to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too good, way too, good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.